Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. But guess what? We're going to solve it without using the cubic formula. Because it's more fun that way. And this is actually a very good example of an equation we can solve without using the formula. Okay, so first let's observe a couple things here. And at this point, if you want, you can just continue to watch the video or you may pause the video and try this problem yourself first. Okay, now, first notice that we have x cubed plus 8. So, what is so special about those numbers? They're perfect cubes. Okay, does that mean anything? Let's put them together. So, I'll take the x cubed and I'll take the 8 and put them together like x cubed plus 8. Cool. And then the rest will be 6x squared minus 12x. And again, this is going to equal 0, right? Cool. So far, so good. I was able to kind of break it down. In other words, me, I'll try to factor by grouping. Okay. Well, x cubed is x cubed and 8 is 2 cubed. So if this could be written as sum of 2 cubes, then I get the following. x plus 2 multiply by, as you know, there's a formula, right? x squared minus 2x plus 4. It's not too hard. It's a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay. And the rest can also be factored. Hmm, let's see. We have a common factor of 6x. Cool. We can take that out. And then we'll get x minus 2 inside the parentheses. Uh-oh. We did not get the same thing. So this is no longer factorable, right? I mean, x plus 2 and x minus 2 are kind of similar, but they're not the same thing. So grouping did not help here. Too bad. We can't use grouping. We have to use something else. But... Having the 8 there should give you a clue. Like what? Well, 8 is still 2 cubed. I wasn't able to write this as a sum of 2 cubes. And difference of 2 cubes is not going to work. So what else can I do? Can I make this a perfect cube? Maybe. How does that work? What do I mean by that? Well, this is what I'm talking about. What is a plus b quantity cubed? Right? Well, it's equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Now, the presence of x cubed and the presence of 8 as first and last terms kind of give me an idea about maybe this, this might be a perfect cube, right? Maybe we can work off of that. How? Well, if I take my a to be x and b to be 2, what am I getting? I'm getting x plus 2 cubed. Awesome. Let's go ahead and expand that, right? Using this formula. I'll be getting x cubed plus 3 times x squared multiplied by 2 plus 3 times x times 2 squared plus 2 cubed. Awesome. I just used the formula, right? And this should equal what? x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. Awesome. I got the 6 and the 12 and the 8. But guess what? I got the wrong sign. Why? I'm supposed to have negative 12x. Uh-oh. What am I going to do? We got to fix that, right? Houston, we have a problem. Okay. So how do we fix this? Well, I can just negate it. Nope. It's not going to work. Hmm. Well, 8 is a number. So it can be arranged x cubed, mm, let's see what happens. But we can do something about this, right? So I'm supposed to have 6x squared minus 12x, but I got 6x squared plus 12x. So here's the type of thinking you need to have. What happens if I replace x with negative x? Or 2 with negative 2? Wow, that's amazing. How do we do that? Well, here's what I'm talking about. What happens if I proceed with x minus 2 quantity cubed instead of x plus 2 quantity cubed? Let's see what happens. Well, I get x cubed, and then I get minus 6x squared. I get plus 12x and minus 8. Awesome. Now, let's compare this to what we have. Are they similar? Uh-oh. They are kind of, well, they're actually opposites. 
So I wanted to get 6x squared, but I have negative 6x squared, but that could be taken care of. How? Well, I can multiply both sides by a negative 1, right? I can, in other words, I can negate both sides. Let's go ahead and negate both sides and let's see what we get from here. So what am I trying to get here? Okay, my goal is to get this, x cubed plus 6x squared, right, minus 12x plus 8. This is what I'm trying to get, but I don't have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to negate this expression, in other words, multiply by negative 1, and I'm going to negate everything on the right-hand side, and let's see what happens. Hocus pocus, abracadabra. This is going to give us a good thing. Why? Not only it gave us 6x squared minus 12x, it also gave us a positive 8. So pretty close to what we need, right? We need this expression. We know that this equals 0, right? Okay, maybe I should write that. Let's back up a little bit here. This should equal 0, right? That's what I would like to have. So I'm pretty close, but how can I do this? Well, everything matches up except for negative x cubed. Wouldn't that be nice if that negative x cubed was magically replaced by positive x cubed? And we can do that. You don't need magic. You need mathematic, okay? Or mathematic. So let's see what we can do. I can add 2x cubed to both sides. Positive, yes. 2x cubed to both sides. Let's see what happens after that. If I do add it here, I should be getting this. If I add 2x cubed here, I should be getting x cubed. Everything else remains the same. Awesome. Well, well. This is good. Why? Because now, look at this. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I got what I needed. Exactly what I needed, right? Okay, cool. So now, then, since we're given that this quantity is equal to zero, I can safely set it equal to zero. Beautiful. And then, totally forget about this thing here. Take it out and then focus on the first part. What do I have? I do have a difference of two cubes. But guess what? You don't need to use the formula because the right-hand side is zero. That's the beauty of this. Since the right-hand side is zero, I can add x minus two cubed to both sides. To keep a long story short, we get the following, right? Awesome. This is beautiful, right? Well, what is that supposed to mean? I have x cubed multiplied by two is equal to another cube. Hmm. So that looks like I have cubes on both sides. Then maybe I can cube root both sides and get the x, right? Let's go ahead and do it. And what do we know about cube roots? They will not produce extraneous solutions because when you cube a positive, it's positive. When you cube a negative, it's negative. It's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and cube root both sides and we'll proceed with that, okay? So I'm going to cube root this one and cube root this one. And what am I going to get from here? Well, cube root of 2. What is that equal to? I don't know, but I can write it as cube root of 2, and the cube root of x cubed is x, and this guy is going to be x minus 2. Awesome. Well, I still haven't gotten the x yet, right? So what am I going to do? Well, cube root of 2 is greater than 1, so maybe I can subtract x from both sides, right? My goal is to solve for x, so I might as well put all the x's on the same side, right? So I'm getting this, and then what can I do next? Well, I can just take the x out, factoring, in other words, and I'll be getting this nice expression. Isn't that beautiful? I get x times the quantity, cube root of 2 minus 1, whatever that number is. Obviously, it's a positive quantity. Equals negative 2. Uh-oh, that means x is negative, probably. Okay, so to find x here, we are supposed to divide, right? So x is going to equal this quantity, negative 2, divided by cube root of 2 minus 1. Awesome. So this is the answer for x. But guess what? There's a radical at the bottom. So should we rationalize the denominator? Uh, it will be good. So how do you rationalize the denominator here? Okay, here's what we do. 
We're going to multiply by the conjugate of this guy here. What's the conjugate of cube root 2 minus 1? You can approach it as a minus b. And if you multiply that by a squared plus ab plus b squared, you're going to be getting difference of two cubes, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. Awesome. So we're going to get a 1 from there. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm supposed to multiply by cube root of 4 plus cube root of 2. All right. Plus 1 divided by cube root of 4 plus cube root of 2 plus 1. And when I multiply this, I'll be getting the beautiful expression. And remember that I told you that when you multiply these together, you're going to get the cube root of 2 cubed minus 1 cubed, which is equal to 2 minus 1, and that's equal to 1. So I don't have to worry about the denominator anymore. So the answer is going to be then, what? It's going to be negative 2 times the quantity cube root of 4 plus the cube root of 2 plus 1. That's going to be the solution to my equation, which was given as a cubic. What do you think about the other solutions? You've got to think about it yourself and let me know. So that's it for this video. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. But don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe this video, okay? You need to do that. And take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.